Good morning. Vicar Dennis here with you again at uh, Divine Shepherd Lutheran Church in Blackhawk, South Dakota. Um, it is February, Saturday, Saturday, February 13th. I'm glad that you are joining me again today. Um, hello to everybody out there that's uh, tuning in. And um, uh, so my, the readings that I'm using for today are from Psalm 95, uh, 1 through 7. And the, uh, I'll be using the New Testament reading, which is from uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 4. And let's see. Yep, I think that's where we're at. And we will make our beginning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The psalm is from, this is again from Psalm 95. No doubt that you will recognize this, and we're going to talk about it in just a minute. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it. And his hands formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Isn't that beautiful? Psalm 95. And that's our, that's, we know that is our venite from, from uh, our matin service, the early morning prayer service, um, that uh, this is a liturgical chant. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, it's wonderful that we have this rich liturgical heritage uh, in, our, in our church. And um, uh, so, yeah, there you go. There's the, again, there's the venite. The second reading I have from you is the New Testament reading, which comes from John's Gospel, uh, chapter 4, and begins at verse 46. So he, that would Jesus, came again to Cana in Galilee where he had made the water wine. And at Capernaum there was an official whose son was ill. When this man heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he went to, he went to him and asked him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. So Jesus said to him, Unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The official said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, Go, your son will live. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and went on his way. As he was going down, his servants met him and told him that his son was recovering. So he asked them the hour when he began to get better, and they said to him, Yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. The father knew that, knew that was the hour when Jesus had said to him, Your son will live, and he himself believed, and all his household. This was now the second sign that Jesus did when he had come from Judea to Galilee. So I, I could be wrong about this, but I'm thinking, I'm trying to remember in the Gospels, and I think... This is one of the Gospels, uh, this is the miracle in the Gospels, the healing that Jesus performed when he simply spoke, he spoke the word and, and, and it happened. Um, that's, that's, and that's enough. God speaks his word, his word doesn't come back void. And this reminds me, I can, I can see in here 
uh, when, you th when you think about the creation of the world, when God, through his son Jesus, created the world, he spoke things in, into being, and, and it was so. It happened simply because, simply because of his word. Now, here we see in the gospel, the flesh, uh, God, the word made flesh dwells among us. Um, the one who came to redeem us, who came to save us from, from, from death and hell, to certainly to, to open the sight of the blind, to make the lame walk, um, and, and all of those things. And here, here Jesus, we see him uh, as he, uh, in, in John's gospel, at the, beginning, um, at the beginning of his ministry, So it's it's a wonderful it's just a wonderful little story and I think it I think it reminds us that God certainly hears our hears our prayers uh sometimes when we have this idea that God is so far off and he's so distant uh he's he's with us he hears our prayers he knows our needs he knew the need of this man before he even asked and yet he healed. He healed this. He healed this. Uh, he healed this uh, young man's. He healed his son simply by speaking the word. He wasn't even there. He didn't touch him, and all those things. Thanks be to God for that. So the connection I kind of made here uh, with this reading was continuing on in the second article of the Apostles' Creed. This is part two. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? He has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood, and with his innocent suffering and death. That I may, that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he has risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. So now once again we confess the Apostles' Creed together in its entirety. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, by the patient suffering of your only begotten Son, you have beaten down the pride of the old enemy. Now help us, we humbly pray, rightly to treasure in our hearts all that our Lord has of his goodness, born for our sake that following his blessed example, we may bear with patience all that is, all that is adverse to us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now we pray Luther's morning prayer together. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, 
And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, once again, it was great uh, uh, to be with you again today. Uh, let's see, the next time I will see you, I believe, is February, uh, Saturday, February 20th. God's blessings once again to you on this day, and uh, may he be with you always. And we'll see you soon. <laughs>